is there any other patient population that we should be considering um, when we're stratifying for vaccine candidacy? I mean, obviously, there's a whole slew of immunocompromised patients. Uh, cardiometabolic patients are at very severe risk and concern. Does that apply to vaccine assessment? Oh, oh I think every intern who has those patients in their population wants to know those answers. We don't often have all the answers in those subpopulations at the time of vaccine licensure but certainly that will be of interest. And up the age stratification, you know, oh, 15, 20 years ago, you'd just have an age group 65 and older. Now people want to know, oh, 60 to 70, 70 to 80, over 80, how are those people responding? So trying to get those folks in. And let's not forget, people are looking today for diversity would like a reasonable representation of people who are African-American and Hispanic, at the very least, in our trials. Not always easy to recruit folks from that background because of a long past history of having been exploited in medical care systems and uh, in previous trials of treatments and such. So there are, there's wariness in minority communities of volunteering for vaccine trials. But every time you go to the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices with a new vaccine, there will be people who raise their hand and say, what proportion of people who volunteered came from the minority community? Right, right. And, and are there ways that we found to resolve that concern and primary issue of how it affects uh, different demographics and ethnicities? Well, all of the companies that uh, engage in vaccine trials have folks who are more or less skilled in trying to reach out to minority communities and trying to recruit participants. And it still works in an uncertain fashion. For example, I've just recently seen some data on a vaccine that's got nothing to do with this, but the proportion of people in uh, the vaccine trial who came from the African-American community was very small. I mentioned that to them and I said, you're going to hear from that, uh, hear about that from people at the Food and Drug Administration and when it comes to the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practice. Be prepared to answer those questions. Imaginably, that's going to be concerned for investigative uh, vaccines like the one being manufactured in England right now, uh, considering the trial population is made up of, I think, four different regions around London. Uh, clearly doesn't represent the full demographic of the US, let alone the world, necessarily speaking. So it's kind of interesting to see how that's either circumvented or, or explained around or, or what kind of development comes in assessment there. Yeah, you know, London is a very diverse city. So maybe they'll, they're more effective in recruiting people from uh, minority populations. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess we will. So, I mean, I mean, again, uh, like we said before, sort of morbidly interesting to see exactly how exactly they're they're responding to vaccine development during a pandemic. Um, is there any any other notes or feedback you have from uh, just the current uh, race to find something right now, or is there another candidate that stands out to you, Dr. Schaffner? Well, nothing especially exciting, except that there are lots of people around the world who are still working in the laboratory and about to get into phase one studies with a variety of different antigens. And so we'll be hearing more news about this over time. It's not just these vaccines. There are other people out there having a run at it. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, uh, there's been a huge stress, um, especially in the past month, uh, to people who have clinically recovered and proven to recover to donate plasma and help better interpret and understand it. Uh, do, we, do we hope that's going to... If not, I guess, rally you know, the vaccine pursuit, but just bolster it in some kind of way, our clinical understanding? Sure. If we could see that uh, convalescent plasma actually had a beneficial effect, that would add further impetus to vaccine developers because it would actually say that immune serum has some power to mitigate disease. Um, I'm not sure we're going to get a whole lot of data from that because I'm, it seems, at least at the moment to me, not being organized into large trials. I think we'll get a lot of anecdotes. 
What has me a little more excited is monoclonal antibody studies. Uh, so there are investigators such as Jim Crow right here at Vanderbilt who are identifying specific antibodies that can be turned into monoclonal antibodies that he thinks will actually neutralize the virus. And having those products in clinical trial, that would be very interesting. Can you highlight some of those agents? Um, it just, it's so early, I don't, I don't even know what Jim Crow's designations are, but there's also a group of investigators I know in the Netherlands who uh, are working on this same project. Right. And, and presumably this is targeting those pathways that we've seen some benefit of other therapies, including IL-6 and things of that nature, right? More of an inflammatory response. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's interesting to know and, and uh, looking forward to seeing that come out. That, uh, the antibody um, therapy class in, in terms of its treatment for other inflammatory diseases, its progression in the last few years has been really interesting. And it is interesting to consider it playing a role right now with, with this. So that's great to hear. You know, you know, uh, Kevin, this is really 21st century applied science to an immediate acute problem. And in that sense, this is really exciting that it's generated so much focused scientific attention. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's, it's really great to see at least the wheels of you know, clinical application churning at the same speed as research and it working together much more collaboratively. And again, the fact that we're able to disseminate and discuss an ongoing uh, trial in England in real time and, and understand its interpretation on, on the U.S. and vice versa is, is just great to see and very necessary right now. So um, unless there's anything else you want to add about the current state of you know, vaccination pursuit or even just uh, promising therapies, things of that nature, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. And, and I'm good. That's, that's all I really had. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us right now. I, I know it's near the end of the week. appreciate you jumping on with us. <laughs> and, uh, please stay in touch as you learn more about this stuff or anything else you want to highlight. Well, thanks, Kevin. And it was nice at the end of the week to talk about COVID in, in kind of a bit of an optimistic vein, right? Yeah. That's a, we can use a little good news. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good to remember it's going to get better.